Jan Shi Jing, members of the delegation from Sichuan University, including the Director General, China Center for South Asia Studies, uh, Director Pakistan Study Center, Member Academic Committee, China Center for South Asia Studies, Deputy Director, International Office, Director, Pakistan Study Center, Associate Dean, School of International Studies, and the <coughs> lady over there who corresponded with me. She's Research Associate at the China Center for South Asian Studies. So welcome to this institute, and it is a great honor that you are here with us today, both in terms of uh, of the, re uh, the friendly relationship and the strategic relationship between Pakistan and the People's Republic of China, and also because you represent a very great institution. So well, we have invited some of our council members and some of our academics to join us in this discussion with you. And I hope that we can have a very fruitful and rewarding discussion. I would uh, first uh, say a few words about this institute. I've already uh, briefed uh, the uh, Vice President of Sichuan University about it. But I would like to repeat that, as I told you, this is the oldest think tank in Pakistan. It was set up in 1947. It, has, it is an in, uh, independent think tank. It is uh, not a government body. It is not a government entity. Uh, but as I told you, we consider it one of our duties to carry forward the national interest. And I was very, uh, I understand and I respect what you told me about the system under which you work academically in, in China. So I would request you, Professor, to say a few words and then we can open the discussion. Uh, thank you, the Chair, Madam. So I'm very, uh, very happy to be here to visit this uh, Pakistan the Institute of International Affairs. Uh, as we know, that is the uh, basic the topics to at least one of the topics to the thinking tank in Pakistan. So the same thing that the Sichuan University is one of the three that is the oldest Chinese university, which was in 1896. And also the second the largest the Chinese university in mainland China. So we have the 65,000 65, students. Um, yeah, yeah. That is uh, uh, with, uh, you say, uh, more than 4,000 international students, and also nearly the 100 Pakistan studies student study with us. So you may you know, we say, uh, where is the Sichuan University? I think that it's easy for you to remember the location is the Chengdu. But if you not, cannot remember the Chengdu, but you can easily remember the hometown of the panda. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you remember the panda, where is the Sichuan University? Then that is the, uh, traditionally, that is the, one of the cultural characters for the Sichuan people. So you, they like to the, drink the tea. So that is the, go anywhere, you'll find the traditional uh, uh, Sichuan tea house. So that is the, it's kind of the culture. And also the same thing, we like the spicy food. Let me see. Yes. But we have the different the chili. So Sichuan University is the, uh, is a, a national university sponsoring by the central government. And also, that is the uh, top 10 university that is among nearly 3,000 universities in China. Yeah, yeah, 3,000. So that is a very, very top. Yeah, and, and this morning I get to read the news from my a colleague told me that is that this year uh, for the ranking for the China, when we're talking about the university in the world, always talking about the ranking. But this year, that is the we ranked the number six. 
This morning I was told. So that is very tough. And this university is really the focus of the international studies. So that is the uh, we since we uh, uh, especially for the China take uh, take the open the policy. So we have the uh, China Center for South Asian Studies. That is state level center. That is the uh, uh, at the university. We also have the Center for American Studies. Center for European Studies, for Asian Studies, yeah, and others, Japan, Korea. And also we have the School for International Studies for training the talent, young talents from the undergraduate students to the PhD students. So here I'd like to introduce this, my colleagues. The first of all, the Director General, the Professor Sun Sihan, very senior scholars in the South Asian Studies in China. Uh, uh, and also the director, the director general for the EC, China Center for South Asian Studies. Yeah. Uh, sec, uh, uh, on his uh, late, that is uh, Professor Zhang Ni, also very senior the scholars and professors, a uh, doctor, and also in the South Asian Studies and the China Center for South Asian Studies. And this, uh, uh, the Professor Sun, that is the uh, director for the Center for uh, Pakistan Studies and the Sichuan University, and also the associate dean of the School of International Studies, also a member, that is, uh, for the China Center for South Asian Studies. And next, that uh, Professor Hong Yun Sung, that is the associate dean of the School of the International Studies, and also the uh, head, well, that is actually the, like the secretary uh, of the China Center for South Asian Studies, yeah. And in the next study is the Professor Yang Guang, that he studied, the, actually he studied the American studies, and also that is the, uh, the working as an associate dean for the international affairs of the Sichuan University. Uh, that's the, the madam, and the Xiao, that is the, uh, that is the assistant uh, working for EEC for uh, for, uh, the, the dean and for the school of the international uh, studies. So this time that is we are very happy to be here and to share with you. And we, as Madam mentioned, that China and Pakistan has a very good relations. So that is uh, uh, the mission that for us uh, traveling the Pakistan or uh, uh, University of Punjab at Lahore. And here uh, I uh, sorry P I I A this morning. And often we are going to visit the EC uh, University of Karachi. Thank you. Can we have a discussion? Yes. We yeah. have in this audience uh, a member of our council who has lived in China for many, many years. <coughs> and uh, she is uh, not only a member of our council, she is also a civil rights uh, defender. And Mandas, would you like to ask? I, I don't know really what to ask because the hot topic here is secret. So, uh, but uh, from my point of view, I would like to ask uh, uh, the number of women in your university, in the faculty, and in the students, do you think they are? And I have seen there is gender equality, of course, because I spent so much time here. But nowadays, because so many changes have taken place since I left China. So would you like to tell us about the gender quality in the arms of faculty members and among the students? That is the, the is a ratio that is the, for Sichuan University nearly the uh, 51 percent for the uh, male and the for the like for the for the and that is the. Uh, it's a, it for the school for language, that is a for, it's a, and a school for arts, the female is a much uh, higher. But you know, the, right now you see, I, I show the example that is a, for the same for the engineering studies. That the, the used to be there for the, the boys, students. but right now the, for the engineering increase. The interesting that happened in, in archaeology, you know, archaeology that is 
go to the field work, but right now the even I think to the 65 even more than you know, <coughs> the other girls. So increase very quick. And of course that is the for uh, for the families. You see we had the full affiliated the is in hospitals. As is a, a number. So that is the really that is the uh, uh, the women's uh, the, the professors has played a very very important role that is both for the education and you say for the, the, uh, the scientific research uh, you would easily find a lot of you say we go to the advisor for the PhD students and <coughs> also the women professors yeah, yeah. 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 I've traveled a lot in China, by land, but that's Inner Mongolia, etc. So I've seen the start of the technology in China, which was at that time a little primitive. Right? Then you started reverse engineering, and today China has traveled a lot. My question would be that. The dynamics of this region, which I'm sure you're all specialists of that, what is happening in this region, when you have a big power as India, which is trying to influence the region, but at the same time is trying to claim to have potential to counter China. And we have very close relations with China and a lot of common interests that we have. So what is your policy and what do you think what is going to happen in the future in this region? How do you see that future of this region? Partition of the subcontinent. Um, uh, India has been playing a dominant role uh, in this very region. And uh, if the United States have uh, recognize India's supremacy uh, in subcontinent and uh, China basically was left with no option uh, um, in that regard but my point is that um, since the 19, 1960s I think uh, the relations between India and Pakistan is becoming stronger and stronger and uh, I'm a frequent visitor of New Delhi and uh, each and every time uh, we hold discussion with Indian uh, scholars or the, uh, the members of the st uh, strategic community they always uh, put on the table a uh, so-called Pakistan factor in China-India relations and uh, they specified a lot of elements that why Pakistan should not be uh, a close ally or a partner of China, uh, saying a lot of evil things about your country, your great country. But my uh, response is always consistent. Pakistan is a great country and has played a positive role in this uh, very region of the world. And uh, the relation between Pakistan and China is conducive to the peace and the stability in this region. And uh, we strongly believe that uh, this relation is beneficial to both countries, not only beneficial to these two countries, but also to the whole region. And uh, we strongly support the stability, peace, and prosperity of this country. We do everything we can to support Pakistan, either from the economic, political, and military perspective. And uh, I, I know, uh, especially um, during the last two decades, and uh, Pakistan has went through some you know, ups and downs. And uh, these difficult times, um, especially coming to the, uh, just now I asked uh, a very difficult questions to, uh, to Ambassador Hassan uh, about the disparity between India and Pakistan is increasing instead of, you know, being decreased. And uh, I think uh, China is trying to play a positive and supportive role in this regard to rejuvenate uh, 
uh, Richard and I, uh, uh, Pakistan. And uh, the balance in the subcontinent is basically incumbent upon a strong and uh, uh, you know um, a strong and uh, and prosperous Pakistan. And uh, we don't want to see uh, uh, this uh, whole region uh, to be on command of uh, New Delhi uh, to do whatever they, they, they like. And uh, I think uh, in the long run, this relation will remain consistent and strong. Uh, and uh, talking about uh, the CPEG uh, project, initiated since 2013. This is the very design and the proposal from the Chinese central government. Mm -hmm. Through this project, I think uh, we have been channeling our resources and the technologies and uh, you know, the know-hows to Pakistan in, it, uh, in every possible sector to beef up Pakistan and, uh, and to help Pakistan to play a role that is, you know, um, expected uh, by the uh, by the people in this region and the world at large. Would you like to also cover the influence of Indian Ocean? That the Indians are trying to, you know, monopolize the influence in the Indian Ocean. That I'm sure the China is also interested. So, what's going to happen in that? Uh, this is. Uh, the, the, the very questions that I have been asked by many Indian colleagues as well. And uh, because uh, since 2008, I think uh, China has been expanding, you know, economically uh, uh, very significantly. And uh, um, our footprints in the Indian Ocean region has been becoming uh, more and more visible and uh, uh, which raised concerns not only from, uh, by uh, uh, concerns of con by countries uh, both within and uh, beyond this region. Uh, but I think uh, the presence uh, of China in this region, especially the military presence, uh, because some people claim that uh, Indian Ocean is highly militarized because of uh, China's presence in this region. But my point is that uh, the military activities conducted by Chinese uh, Navy is basically confined in a very specific area, which is for the anti-piracy uh, purpose, and uh, which is not commensurate to the economic presence of China's, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, and our economic interests in this region. So. I, I would like to say that uh, we are looking for a greater role in the security arch architecture in the Indian Ocean region in the years to come. And uh, in this regard, I think Pakistan is a very trustworthy and supportive partner in, uh, in this agenda. And uh, we're looking forward for closer relations, cooperations between each other in this area, in in shaping uh, the new uh, security architecture in this region, and uh, we are looking forward to uh, you know more positive uh, you know uh, initiatives from your side, and uh, uh, this is something on my mind for for quite some time. Thank you. Center for South Asian Studies and especially the pa Pakistan Studies Center established. And at these centers, do you concentrate on the pre-colonial period, the colonial period or the post-colonial period? And how many students are there from Pakistan? Any research publications which have been internationally acclaimed or published? Any information on that? Thank you. China Center uh, for South Asian Study is deployed by the Central Government in our university. So uh, the center uh, concentrating, I think, is currently like the, uh, country like current affairs uh, in, in South Asia. As for the center, uh, as Pakistan Study Center, it was you know jointly sponsored by uh, Pakistan government, uh, uh, accompanied by the Pakistan Embassy 
in Beijing, Sponsored Financial Sponsor, and our university. In 2007, uh, our university uh, and uh, Punjab Union, we signed an MOU with, uh, you know, which was, which was in, uh, witnessed by Shaka Aziz. And uh, from that time, I was starting this center. And uh, we are you know, also concentrated on this current affairs, you know, our relationship, you know, between China and Pakistan, politically, economically, culturally, and all the fields that were just to improve the relationship and the better understanding of the peoples between the two countries. So far, we have, in you know, our university, we have almost 100 uh, Pakistan students study all different uh, colleges or schools, as our vice president mentioned. But so uh, at this time, no, we in Chengdu city in this area, we have six or seven university. Now we have more than six hundred students from Pakistan. They are learning Chinese, learning political science, uh, computer science, MBA, and uh, even some other uh, disciplines there. So we are happy, you know, to have many students, and we are. Uh, uh, you know, hoping to have more because, but, but uh, for Pakistan Center, because this is academic, you know, we don't have the students directly. But uh, our in our university, we have you know, diff different uh, schools and colleges from different surveys. So, uh, of course, I'm not a university judge, meaning uh, working with the uh, Pakistan uh, Consular General in Chengdu, you know, to uh, a lot of directions with the Pakistan students in Chengdu. You know, with other university also to uh, with our you know, our students, you know, to improve the better understanding of the younger generation. You know, so we have the data. We'll continue to do that. Thank you. Uh, for, uh, first organization studies. This center has been established uh, uh, just for two years. It is uh, uh, it was also rise <laughs> and by, also financed by the central government. China, uh, supposed to be a think tank, uh, 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 make suggestions, policy suggestions to the central government, also the provincial government, also. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the first time uh, for me to be in, uh, be in, in uh, Karachi. So uh, just to seek uh, cooperation with the think tanks in this city. Uh, this afternoon we will visit uh, 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 Karachi University. So your institute has been very uh, many times it suggested me to visit uh, because it is very old and very different, so very independent institute think tank. So such kind of a think tanks, I think we have a lot of uh, opportunities to cooperate with each other. Uh, so just now I formally invited. Now, Madam Ambassador, to visit our center and uh, do exchange programs and give lectures to the students in the School of International Studies. Uh, and uh, I have a question. So just now, the Professor Wang Yunsu, the uh, Associate uh, Dean of Interna School of International Studies, also working with our center, uh, he mentioned that uh, China has initiated uh, initiative uh, uh, bad and low initiative, bad and low initi initiative, and also the CPAC China Pakistan Economic Corridor. Uh, this has been uh, uh, so many projects now uh, have been uh, uh, undertaken uh, or finished now uh, completed now uh, in this corridor. Uh, but recently, uh, just recently, I think. Uh, uh, some foreigners uh, like Americans or even Indi Indians or even uh, Pakistan media, a lot of noisy about the CPAC, <laughs> a lot of negative views. Uh, I don't know whether in your institute, uh, independent institute, uh, you have any pro uh, researcher or scholar to, who study on CPAC. Uh, this is a very important uh, project. It is called flagship uh, uh, project for, for the Belt and Road Initiative. So I, I just want to uh, uh, know uh, some scholars who will give a 
uh, viewpoints about CPAC. Thank you. May I, Madam? I will answer your question later on. But first, we'll take a few questions. On Kashmir, it is another matter that France, with its liberty, with its legality and fraternity, has put a spanner there. As far as CPEC is concerned, we have a press which believes in the freedom of the press but does not believe in the freedom of expression. We see articles against the CPEC written also by a countryman, but there are some people who do not want to see Pakistan stabilized, who do not appreciate the great stabilizing influence of our friendship with China, and people will attempt to undo the great uh, help that Pakistan is receiving from the country, which is such a great source of comfort. Thank you. National conferences to in Gavadar and then Islamabad. And I think that CPEC is the not only flagship between, the region, between Pakistan and China, but it is going to transform the entire country and even the region. So may I ask, that who is stabilizing Pakistan? Narendra Modi, the fastest Prime Minister of India, has already here marked hundreds of dollars to create a negative impact of CPEC in Pakistani papers. And I'm sorry there are certain media men, you know, my own country, actually who told that line of India. So I, I don't care and I don't, I'm not afraid because I'm fighting a, a war for my own country. So I believe that this United States is right, they are responsible actually to create destabilizing the situation in Pakistan. Thank you. Hi, I am uh, Mohammed Nafis. I'm working for the Center for the Strength of Security Studies. This is Islamabad, but I'm this Karachi. The question that I think uh, came from the Chinese side was to find out if there is any organization or individual working dedicatedly on CPAC program. The two gentlemen who tried to answer this question probably didn't take care of that question. To my knowledge, I don't know if there is any uh, organization working specifically on this subject. We are talking of freedom of expression. And here I am hearing comments about the press people who are being negative or positive. We don't have to take these type of positions. People have different opinion on different issues. We should respect positive opinions and negative opinions as well and come up with some facts and figures to argue the opinion that are being projected. This is the civilized way of dealing these things instead of talking negatively about it. I take it seriously in this manner. Anyhow, the thing that I have in mind on CPEC is a $65 billion type of project. How many Pakistani people are working on this project? And in what level? Because when we saw steel wheel coming up, thanks to Russian help or Soviet Union help, we saw a big community, the whole area was developed and people started living in it. That's, that's the whole this place is still there. But right now with the CPAC, I don't see employment coming up as far as I know. I may be wrong. So I need to know about that. Thank you. To say that uh, two years back we conducted a research uh, um, on the labor market along the uh, countries, uh, in countries along the uh, Belt and Road Initiative, especially uh, in, in the South Asia, uh, South Asia. Uh, uh, the facts we found out is that uh, the, the labor forces in these regions 
are not fully prepared for uh, industrialization. We're talking about the young people. Uh, because uh, I would like to, uh, uh, to give you some facts. Um, in China, annually China produce uh, you know, two million engineers for the uh, industries, for the economic development in China. Uh, when they get these, you know, uh, uh, full-scale training in, in their future line of work, and uh, they can very easily, uh, you know, um, get mingled with their, uh, you know, uh, their work. Uh, but when it comes to South Asia, we, I think uh, the basic trainings and uh, their uh, their educations. Uh, more focused on the social sciences. And uh, there are a large portion of young people who are not getting you know, uh, adequate, sufficient education. Um, they, they are expected to, to get. That's why I think uh, the employment uh, as, uh, in connection with the CPEC is not uh, as good as we expect. But uh, the purpose for CPEC or Belt and Road Initiative is to have the people uh, in countries along these projects to benefit from it and uh, to have themselves employed by the projects and uh, have them, their living standard raised and uh, to have their families, you know, to live a better life. And, uh, but there is a gap. A deficit of training and education, which can only be uh, alleviated through joint efforts. And uh, that's why uh, our ministry commissioned this research. And our suggestion to the ministry is that we should focus, uh, focus our efforts in these countries, including Pakistan, to provide these training programs, you know, some of them very basic. Uh, to help them, you know, become prepared. For instance, like uh, how to weld, you know, and how to, you know, do the basic, you know, to, to acquire basic skills in construction and uh, to teach them, uh, uh, you know, certain skills that is very necessary and required in uh, uh, projects uh, in CPEC. And uh, our central government has, you know, uh, you know, Think, uh, th uh, has thought highly of our research and uh, uh, the, according to my knowledge, the policy uh, uh, hammered out last year was basically, you know, based on our research saying that we should invest more in, uh, in these training programs for the countries along the Belt and Road Initiative. And I think uh, probably very soon and uh, you will see more of these programs you know, available in Pakistan as well as other countries. And uh, I don't know uh, my answer is, uh, is satisfactory enough <laughs> to uh, you, Mary, but uh, that's my Okay, as for the in, uh, employment, you know, uh, uh, now we are, when we talk about the CPEC, you know, we, so far we have completed uh, the first phase, you know, which is was uh, largely concentrated on the infrastructure, construction, and uh, power uh, supply. So this is very important you know, because we are, this is what we did in the last 40 years. And uh, now we have entered the second phase of construction of CPEC. You know. Now we are getting you know, to uh, uh, do, as we, we say, this is uh, the relocation of industries. Because you know, when you have finished uh, the infrastructure, now we need to field forms of the, you know, the industries. Uh, so far, uh, the Pakistani government has you know, it's designed nine uh, SEZs, special economic zones, right? And, uh, but uh, there's, uh, uh, there are some problems on that, but uh, frankly, because uh, you know, in China, we have a lot of the you know, call it very competitive industries which should be relocated, you know, especially for Pakistan. And, uh, so I think it's a you know, way, it's a, we call it mutual compensation between China and that, which will uh, create a lot of jobs for, uh, because Pakistan has a 
shoes, you know, for the back of the people, you know, young people, labor, which is much, much needed here over in China. So, uh, you know, when we are, you know, you know relocating, you know, of course, we have been convincing my friends, you know, in the, in, in the business sector in China that uh, Pakistan is very ideal uh, designation in place to relocate your industries in, in Pakistan because we have the labor, you have the raw materials, you have the location, you have, you know, of course we have the very preferential policies there. So, in fact, during the past few years, I've been working very hard on this uh, as right by the Pakistan Embassy, you know, ambassador, you know. So, I, I, I think this is a way that we can help each other in Pakistan. So, uh, uh, like, uh, let, let me say, uh, uh, recently, you know, I, I noticed that uh, according to the Chinese embassy, you know, some data, you know, some seconds that uh, in the recent years, you know, we, uh, there are some, you know, uh, uh, SCZ or industrial parks here in Pakistan, especially in Punjab, because of them. Uh, they, uh, they say they have the pro uh, provided some uh, 70,000 uh, jobs for the local people there, you know. And in future, you know, you know uh, there will be more, much more that if we can relocate the industry is very, very competitive. Let me just say, uh, name something like uh, the manufacturing, manufacturing industry, like, like uh, the sh uh, shoemaking industry, because Pakistan is rich in the leather supplies, I mean, leather raw materials, shoemaking, furniture making, because you know, for my private, central province, we are, we are the largest base, you know, uh, of the many, many furniture industry and also shoemaking industry, and also the Textile others. So two years ago, I was in in Samabad for the first the CPEC summit. You know, I this had a discuss with uh, uh, Dr. Lin Yifu, you know, who was the you know uh, the uh, uh, WG, uh, general I mean, I mean, back, uh, governor of the World Bank Group. So he uh, estimated maybe by the time you know, when the, all the, the framework of you know, the infrastructure construction is completed, then we'll be able to relocate at least uh, 18 million labor jobs to Pakistan, you know. But uh, now as my, my colleague, from Dr. 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 Professor Hwang mentioned that, so far we needed, still needed to improve the, we call the you know, basis, because as mentioned that, you know, is it, as, as the same question, is Pakistan ready to, you know, receive all these jobs now to Pakistan, as for the not, 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 not to say the 80 million, but uh, if we can, you know, we'll have the, some the, the yeah, we need to do, do that, with, as I said, the vocational training for the job, the young people to be ready to take the, to, uh, the jobs, like, you know, a lot of jobs, you know, need to be uh, temporary, you know, or trained. Like the, the running of the bulldozer, the level cranes, uh, all these things, so to say, and some, some others, you know. So, uh, in fact, I've been talking with the, my, my friends in Pakistan, along uh, with my, my friends in the business sector in Canada. So, we need, uh, by the time when we uh, relocate the industries here uh, in, in the different uh, sectors, but uh, there's a question. We, this is what my suggestion to the Pakistan government and also about mine too, because as for the ACCs, they were uh, designed uh, some time ago, a few years ago, but now when I, I, I've been brought, bringing the investors, you know, last year I came to uh, here in Karachi, I, I was, you know, invited to give a like, speech and uh, the keynote speech and the uh, CPEC also. Uh, so, uh, the ACs, you know, when were designed, were not, you know, you know, not so relevant to the I mean, industries, especially some, you know, uh, locationally or some other other reasons. So in in stage, some investors when they came, they found a good place to, you know, to start to build their industrial parks. So my suggestion is it possible to adjust some of the ACs, which you know. So that you know the investors intend to start their business. 
So when they, when they visited, you know, I went there and visited like, the instances, but they found something not so ideal or compared to you know, their situation, maybe. Um, so I, I'm, you know, very positive about the future of the, the, the industry of education in the future. And uh, you know, our center will be able to do that. Thank you. Yep, Shitsa, do you mind? I'm, um, Brigadier Professor Dr. Saeed from DHS Park University and Pro Vice Chancellor. I have an experience of about eight years of research, uh, research in plant again. So my question is uh, with regard to the Education Secretary of State of the US, uh, USA last month that she was uh, presenting about the CPAC. And she did not hesitate to say that soon China is going to have. Uh, that trap for Pakistan, and in, in response, or the passage of time, Pakistan might lose its sovereignty and the surrender of the assets. Now, this kind of uh, uh, narrative was very well uh, uh, imitated by the Chinese ambassador in Pakistan, as well as the foreign office of the Pakistan. Now, having said that, when I was teaching here in my university, I was taking a course, uh, contemporary world, and that CPAC and war and uh, all these topics were covered by me. The day when she gave this presentation, it went viral. So my students got hold of me in the corridors of the university and asked me, sir, you said CPEG is going to benefit Pakistan like anything, and soon we are going to be one of the economic giants in the South Asia or not. And what this American uh, lady was saying yesterday on the television. I was uh, like, OK, I'll, I'll get back to you. Uh, I went back onto the uh, different uh, websites, of, uh, the area state center for the Chinese. But unfortunately, I could not find any reference from the Chinese scholars here on the Google. Now, I, I had to prepare a presentation for over 400 students of mine in the hall to make them understand that, look, the, the US has its own interest while creating this narrative. Yes. My question is that while being you yourself part of the area study center there in your university, and we also have a number of area study centers in Pakistan, like one of the very, uh, very University Islamabad, perhaps one of the Karachi University as well. Do you have any collaboration to prepare the counter narratives, or for that matter, to pre prepare those joint narratives in which the scholars or the teachers like us in the university, with the dynamic minds are growing up, we can just pick up and present. Your writings are there in the Chinese language. We can, being a patriot myself, or being fully aware of like Chinese and Pakistani friendship, there's no second thought about it. I had to take a number of leads from the Foreign Office statements. But how about the Chinese scholars giving their perspective on the, uh, on the, on the, on the, on the net from where we can have the joint uh, uh, narratives? So do you have any kind of collaboration? with the area study centers of China in Pakistan. Uh, yeah, is in control, uh, uh, is controlled by the West. And uh, for the, uh, for the, for the maybe years to come, we cannot change the facts. That's the reality we have to accept. And most uh, Chinese uh, scholars, they do research, they do it in Chinese. That's also a fact. And, uh, that's a weak point of our, you know, uh, you know, uh, research community, and uh, it is also something our central government is trying to change, but it takes time. And uh, the second point is that uh, we have tried, in certain cases, to to negate the so-called debt trap diplomacy, which uh, was, you know, uh, fabricated by. Uh, by certain Western countries and India included. And uh, we are kind of aware that uh, 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 some, some Indian uh, organizations is behind the story. And uh, two years back, um, uh, two years back we published uh, an article uh, uh, which is titled, uh, CPEC is not dead trap and uh, successfully get it published uh, um, in Korean times. But, let me be very honest with you, after publication of this article, we kind of, uh, you know, 
got in trouble because uh, the editor, you know, uh, they 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 are unable. They are unable due to certain reasons to uh, you know to ask for us to contribute other articles for them because you know there are certain influences from the outside. And uh, in that very article, we have specified the very details why the debts, uh, you know, uh, uh, of Sri Lankan government uh, and uh, all, all the loans uh, that China, you know, uh, gives uh, gave to the Sri Lankan government is not that Trump. We listed, you know, you know, details in figures, and uh, these, you know, stories, uh, they have, you know. Uh, shredded p bits and pieces of facts. They successfully piece them together and uh, fabricate, you know, uh, uh, a false story, which is not uh, uh, confronted enough uh, adequately by our side. And uh, we are looking into it. And uh, there will be uh, countermeasures from our side. But uh, let me be very frank with you: that is our <laughs> weak weak point and we have to work very hard to beef up our ability in this field. Do you think you have joined our council? Yes, we have tried. Yes. We have tried. Jamshed, Mr. Jamshed Hashmi, please. He is one of the builders of the Kanu power plant. He is uh, on, okay, on board on all the uh, collaboration between uh, Pakistan and China in the building of nuclear power plants. Mr. Hashmi. Uh, to meet the delegation from Chandu University uh, on this round. Uh, I have a friend, a very old friend, Fu Chan, who worked, uh, I think, uh, over 40 years ago, before even CPEC was conceived at the HMC. He and another colleague of his who lived in the same room, and the colleague was later went to become the president of China. So our relationship goes much beyond what you are talking now about CPEC. Uh, it's December of this year, it's 47 years that a Chinese delegation first came to Karachi at Kenna. Uh, and it had uh, all the top engineers and scientists from China. And uh, we offered them that, look, uh, we would visit all the known places, Bachai Mosque, the Khyber Pass, and so on. And the answer was, thank you very much. But what we'd like is that we want to spend the remaining part of our time to get lectures from you. These distinguished people sat on in school chairs listening to us talking about nuclear power. What greatness. And that relationship has stayed since 72. Uh, you were talking about CPEC. I, I apologize for the ignorance of our own people that we have a $10 billion investment of CPEC at, in Karachi, at the Karachi nuclear power plant, where 2,200 megawatt units are being built. And the people being employed there are not just Chinese. I wish you could have the time to go in and see them. And it's a pity that our own colleagues don't care about it or can see them. The people working there with, with the Chinese company see that are Pakistanis. They're Pakistani technicians, Pakistani workers trained by Pakistanis. We have five nuclear, four nuclear power plants at Cheshma. 
starting off in December 91, where the contract was signed for the first one, where all four plants were built with the help of Chinese, along with Pakistanis. And uh, we've had Pakistanis. One of my colleagues was invited. He spent two years to work for the Chinese at uh, the Chinshan nuclear power plant, where they had a heavy water uh, reactor from Canada. And that was China's first experience of uh, uh, a heavy water plant, whereas we had cannot had experience for many years. So the, the unfortunate fact is, as you were saying, that we have not been able to communicate. And the lack of communication is perhaps from our side. I, where I lived, in my parents' house right across in the 50s was a Chinese consulate. And the people there were speaking Urdu. The counselor there, his master's from Karachi University, and later on went to become the ambassador of China to Pakistan. We have similar cases there. Riaz Mohammad Khan, yes. a ambassador of uh, Pakistan to China, spoke fluent Chinese. How many of us know that? And I think uh, what uh, I can I can keep on for for hours. But what our distinguished colleague has suggested that uh, there should be a a presence, a cooperation between this institute and and Sichuan University at Chengdu. It's a uh, it will be a starting point. Yeah. Uh, you are already going to visit Karachi University, but that does not exclude the fact that you should have your academy or your uh, study center should have deep roots at PWA. And I hope this will transpire at the beginning of uh, uh, Dr. Masumar visit to China. Yes. Thank you very much for everything. Are you going to read again? Yes, I am. Well, don't make it more than a page because there's lunch also to follow. I shall read uh, for three minutes. Just for three minutes. I think we can take it. So the, uh, it is especially uh, for my Chinese friends for whom I have uh, very great respect from my heart. The topic of this, uh, my brief statement is Pakistani youth as the pivot of Pakistan-China relations. And I am very pleased and very satisfied that I am on the right lines. During the course of discussion, I have listened to my honorable sir, and sir, you are very right that we are short of skills and short of development. I agree with you. There is no question about it. I believe now, distinguished guests, I feel highly privileged to find myself among the most learned class of China, a country which every citizen loves as the most trusted friend of Pakistan. I consider this session as a golden opportunity to apprise you with the plight of Pakistani youth, which is deprived of educational resources to develop their skills, so that you are right. According to Pakistan's National Human Development Report of 2018, 64% of population of Pakistan is below the age of 30. And most importantly, 29% is between ages of 15 to 29 years. 
if mission oriented opportunities in multi faceted education employment and engagement are created to empower our youth it would unleash gigantic potential in favor of those especially chinese who engage this segment of our society according to my professional assessment stressed over 40 years china is the most favorable country for our youth pursuing affordable higher education under very conducive environments at present when dr henry kissinger has recognized china at par with the united states while donald trump administration is considering china as their arch enemy pakistan finds itself embroiled into the sino us trade war this is a dilemma which has impeded the pace of pakistan china cooperation however i say with a sigh of relief that our chinese friends are fully aware of our compulsions and implications nevertheless there is a strategic way out china has pakistani youth from the remotest regions at its disposal seizing this opportunity i shall draw your special attention towards lord thomas babington mccoy of 1834 though highly controversial but one of the most distinguished socio political personalities like you of east india company who spent just 4 years in india 4 years in india but his policy of introducing english education system known as mikalism changed the face of south asia having a pragmatic approach in mind I suggest to our distinguished Chinese friends to formulate their policies by establishing multi-dimensional educational institutions followed by assured environment in Pakistan where Chinese are undertaking various development projects in this regard Balochistan Sindh South Punjab and Gilgit Baltistan are the most suitable regions where chinese can excel unlimitedly three minutes up in the end i am grateful to all of you especially my chinese great friends for their audience thank you very much any other question as well aap puchna chahoge my name is asghar ali sahib i am the member of the activity council of pdpl ia and also the former president of the project management institute crash pakistan my question is related to the project progress and awareness you know it's normally being said that cpac will now start coming about the ground now can you give any idea of the manpower mobilized by china to pakistan in this regard so far and the manpower of pakistan engaged on the cpac if you have any data and what is the 2020 plan we can see at the end of this year Pakistan was was needed in industrial industry industries. So and we have the very competitive industries here in China, and we would like to relocate this industry into Pakistan. And that way, in one way to meet the requirement of you know, the economic or especially economic uh, industrial development in Pakistan. The, we have a lot of advantages. We have the, the huge stack of the laborers. Young labor, young people, and uh, this is one thing. And of course, of course, we have the vocational advantage and the raw materials and all that. No, so we we relocate industries in the Pakistan. We need a lot of lab laborers, young people. So in that way, we think we can work together to mobilize. Uh, yeah, to mention that to, uh, to you know for the for the young people to be ready. for the industries as skilled workers so we are you know recently we worked with the uh uh principal keep with the Pakistani uh, council general in chengdu a former uh city uh, near now he is here in front of the street now to set up some vocational training 
uh, organizations, whether you're in some, maybe somewhere in back then in, in universities or some in, in China, you know, to uh, train the young people, you know, so that when the industry are relocated to Pakistan, so that they can uh, be easily to start their uh, work here. So I think this is very important right now, and very urgent because you know, I say you know, we are now in the second phase of the CPAC construction now. Many industries you now they are you know ready uh, because I've been working with them that uh, they want to bring their technology and uh, some facilities that they will keep here now to, uh, to set up their industrial parks, maybe in the ACs or not, but because they they told me some of the issues are not so, so you know, you know, compared with the, the, the location or some other, you know, like a power supply something. So maybe by the time there will be huge demand of laborers, and this I think this is the opportunity that we can work together, you know, for the organization of the people, young people especially. Right? But let me add one point. Uh, I'm very glad to see in the just the past one or two years, the World Bank uh, uh, rank uh, uh, about uh, Pakistan the East, uh, easy doing business has been raised yes. about uh, 10, 10 positions. Uh, so we are very glad, glad to see Pakistanese industrialization needs now more for the reform and open. This is a Chinese experience. In 1978, China made an economic reform and opened the door to the outside world. This is a very important experience for China's industrialization and social development. I think Pakistan can learn this uh, experience, give a more favorable environment for the foreign investment in, in, in Pakistan. Just one more. Mm. I have some questions. Sure. Yeah. So I think the uh, very special opportunity, uh, so I can't miss it. Because I know this institute uh, is quite uh, prestigious, I mean, for international skilled studies. I mean, you have two questions, I mean, First one about the uh, EBS change of the constitution regarding Kashmir. I think it's very important. I've been concerned also shared by both Pakistan and China you know, because we, we lose this very important uh, you know, change. I mean, uh, especially just uh, abdicate the you know, our partners uh, state about Kashmir. So I think it is quite possible to do some uh, profound uh, implication. I mean, so. My question is, uh, because just be, uh, before the discussion, we also we talked about the, the Hindu nationalism ever ambitious. I mean, because I think the, but we will want more from Pakistan scholars because you quite familiar with the Indian power politics, also in Hinduism, I mean, uh, also how the years long, you know, the experience to deal with India. I mean, because we know this government, I mean, this whole government just uh, uh, it's given a uh, green light for the, uh, the substantial change, I mean. Uh, so, could you just try to compare, you know, it seems more secular part of Congress party, you know, just before years, years before, you know, this policies, policy, I mean, regarding Kashmir. I mean, because I think it's very important for Chinese scholars, but we just have given this you know, perception about what's going on in Kashmir, the issue. Especially this constitutional change regarding Kashmir. This first question, I mean, another one I think is about Afghanistan. Because uh, we know Pakistan uh, is a very important player, I mean, also in this visible player, I mean, substantial influence on different uh, uh, players, including China. We also we, we just uh, have consensus, I mean, I'm sorry, direct in dealing with this situation in Afghanistan. What we found then, 
last few years, there have been so many, you know, bridges uh, involved in this talk and the reconciliations. I mean, but it's not very positive, you know. Also, sometimes it continues, sometimes it just hold and stall. <laughs> so, so in, from Pakistan perspective, so what's the big problem? I mean, uh, especially behind the scenes, I mean, Afghanistan. More important, uh, how to say the dynamic between the China and Pakistan to cooperation on this issue? I mean, I think it's very important. Thank you. And I have been a little bit banking profession and lived, lived in Africa for a while, working for two banks related from the East. I have been regularly visiting the Mother of Lee's office and house with family in Sudan. I have lived in Kenya and I have signed a protocol for tea and pay development in Pakistan and Kenya. My question is simple that we are more hearing from the press, from the researchers about the CPAC relationship with Pakistan and China. But I have not, I have not heard anything about the OBAR, which is the mainstream of Chinese road, one belt, one road development. And this more than a trillion dollar project compassing, I would say, all Europe, Middle East, Far East. So I would like to hear from our August um, guest that how in from Pakistan point of view we can see a relationship in Africa. One thing more, the first world war, the major point of start was a German word coined as wealth quality, which means place under the sun. China has reached far beyond in Africa and work hard on it, I am sure they would like to avoid any confrontation with the best oriented developed countries, but of course the projects are there and we in Pakistan can cooperate with it on any development. Thank you very much. We'll take another question. Good morning. Well, brothers, well, I think that China is the real brother of Pakistan. I don't think we need to rely on the others. You don't need anyone except you are. So I welcome you wholeheartedly. My proposal today is I've set up a boarding school uh, on the border of Balochistan in Up on 240 acres. I would like to donate to China 25 acres to set up some technical institution there for the benefit of my youngsters. I leave it to you to decide. And we both can collect money in Pakistan. I have already invested uh, 800 million rupees to set up this boarding school. The education goes up to O level, any level. Beyond that, it is totally open. And I think this is the time we need to give our youngsters more information about China and the Chinese language and make them learn the language. This is the only way of becoming closer. Good luck to you all. And considering my... Okay, I have a question now. Who is really helping uh, Africa? And uh, here, the who is, the, as you said, the who is helping Pakistan? Because, you know, when the Americans are going there, they are not investing, they are not taking from something from Africa. And uh, here also, you know, the Americans are trying to start, you know, the, our CPAC construction environment. And this one, okay. So I just, this we can from this camp. And uh, as for the vocational training center or whatever institutes, but this, yeah, we would, would love to do that, but our university is uh, like, like a big tank, a research center, uh, we would love to, but maybe, anyway, I think it is, uh, this is very important for the, for the economic, uh, Growth and uh, social development, and uh, maybe yeah, this, we cannot decide. But anyway, we would like to suggest you know to our government, and that would be a very good thing for us to do. So this, okay, thank you. Very good suggestion that China and uh, Pakistan can do a lot of things in cooperation 
in the development of Africa. That is called the China-Pakistan Plus. Plus any country or region in Africa, we can cooperate with each other, uh, like joint ventures, like mutual, uh, in, uh, mutual uh, investment. Uh, thank you. China talked about what has happened in Kashmir. Uh, China also has talked about uh, the situation in Afghanistan. But with respect to Kashmir, as you know, it's, uh, it's been such a big tragedy that is, that is happening there at prison. And I would like to, and I know that from my research, that China also has an interest in, in, uh, in uh, Kashmir, in Aksai Ji, and uh, has, uh, also it gives a, a route towards uh, mainland China. So I would like to hear from you, Professor, and your colleagues, what your take is on what the Indian government has done in Kashmir. Thank you. It's a very important question. And uh, in this uh, September, in Shantou, we convened a very important meeting on a Kashmir issue as well. And uh, we gathered, uh, uh, the, in this gathering, a lot of, you know, leading scholars in South Asian studies, you know, uh, uh, pitched in and uh, contributed their ideas and opinions uh, on the recent development in Kashmir, uh, post the, uh, the removal of uh, 370, Article 370 of uh, India's constitution. Our basic, uh, you know, assessment of this situ situation is that, uh, we think uh, uh, the, the uh, amendment of the constitution is uh, obviously internal uh, uh, affairs of India, but when it has you know uh, uh, international implications, especially vis-a-vis uh, -vis to a disputed territory, they should be very cautious and uh, they should approach to the stakeholders in the first place when they make such, you know, um, you know, fundamental change to their constitution. And uh, uh, the respect of uh, relevant resolutions and uh, the bilateral agreements is the, uh, is the most important dose uh, in, their in their pursuit for a solution, uh, a durable solution for the, uh, um, for the uh, general way in Kashmir. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Aksa Chin has been uh, included uh, in a, a most recent uh, political map uh, for India. And uh, we are extremely agitated and, uh, and, you know, and we expressed strong protest to India um, to this unilateral you know, change of status quo. Although um, uh, the Foreign Minister of Jashanka uh, visited China and uh, uh, cleared, uh, made a very clear, you know, uh, of their stance on, on on the removal of Article 370, saying that uh, there is basically no change to the status quo, but we don't buy his argument. And uh, when it comes to um, the relation between India and Pakistan, because of the issue, the incident. We think uh, the unilateral, uh, um, uh, unilateral uh, action taken by New Delhi has added up to the complexity of the future of Kashmir issue. And uh, we do not agree to such kind of uh, occurrence. And that, that is why China you know, uh, strongly supported uh, the application of Pakistan and uh, you know, um, and convened um, uh, the, the closed door session in a UNSC for twice now. And um, I think uh, this is a persistent efforts uh, from the part of China. And uh, we will also uh, try very hard to, uh, to recruit supports from like-minded states around the world to support the righteous and justice for Kashmir in the long run. And uh, I think uh, from uh, the part of Pakistan, 
I think uh, there can be more efforts to be made uh, um, to uh, cooperate with uh, China uh, to extend support to the people in Kashmir. That's my point. Thank you. So I will wind up this, uh, this session. Uh, so many interesting uh, points of view have been put across, so many interesting factors have come across. I completely agree with uh, my much respected colleague, Mr. Jamshir Tajmi, that whereas CPEC is of course very important for us today, we should look at uh, our relations with China in a much wider perspective going back right up to 1949 when we, uh, when Pakistan was one of the first countries to recognize the People's Republic of China. And uh, as Jamshed Saab has pointed out, Pakistan and China, apart from CPEC, have collaborated in a, on a much more, in, on a very important dimension, and that is the development of nuclear power. Somebody, I think one of my friends here said that in South Asia, social sciences take precedence over natural sciences, but that is not the perception we have in Pakistan because our, our governments from day one have backed the development uh, of science and technology, have put in lots and lots of funds into it, have sought uh, expertise from abroad to develop it, and uh, we social scientists feel that we have just fallen by the way. And one of our great academic efforts has been that the social sciences should be given at least as much material and other backing as the scientific subjects have. So far as the other issues which were raised, of course, about Kashmir, which is the major issue in Pakistan's foreign policy. It is the major issue. And how it will pan out, we don't know. But not only is it uh, going against international uh, UN resolutions and international human rights, but it's a terrible uh, violation of human rights, of the civic rights of the people of Kashmir, for which we will keep raising our voices. Thank you so much for inviting me to Chengdu. Thank you so much for inviting me to Chengdu. I told you when we first met that since I was a young person, which I am not anymore, I had read about the tea houses of Chengdu and that I had hoped that someday I would be able to visit that beautiful city. I have followed it on the net, that beautiful city. And what you have said to me has brought back a memory. My relationship with China. I have visited uh, China, Beijing, Shanghai, Xi'an, uh, not Xi'an, uh, Shenzhen. Uh, I have visited all these cities. Uh, but. My closest link was when I traveled by road from Islamabad to Kashmir. On the Karakoram Highway, many, many moons away, long ago, not so long either. And I took that road across the Punjab Pass into the Valley of China, and it was the most beautiful journey of my life. It took me Exactly, because that was the amount of leave I was given from my, I was then cabinet secretary, the leave that I was given uh, by the government was seven days. <clears throat> so I went in this convoy because you couldn't travel on your own, you had to go in two or three uh, vehicles. So I went from uh, Sos, across the Kujra Pass and into uh, uh, China met, saw this fascinating landscape, which I have never forgotten. And the hospitality of the Chinese people, 
<clears throat> and we went as far as Kashgar, I mean, you know, Kashgar is a lot in the news these days. We went as far as Kashgar and stayed there for a couple of nights, two or three nights. And then to, went also to Yarkand. On the way we came, came across Yeni Sheher, that is the city which produces knives. Like in Pakistan, Wazirabad is famous for producing knives. So Yeni Sheher was famous for producing knives. And as you go along the road, there are knives all over on the right side and on the left side. And also went to Yarkand. So I have these uh, great memories of, of uh, my visit, my last visit to your great country. But I look forward to Chengdu. I would, however, like to say that, you know, I hope very much that CPEC is going to help to revive the industrial base which Pakistan lost. Pakistan was a producer of a lot of industrial things. It produced locomotives, it produced engines, it produced turbines, and by the way, all that has fallen. And I hope that it will help to revive Pakistani industry. So thank you very much for coming, and we will keep up this cooperation. And uh, after we conclude, now I would like to invite you all to share lunch with us downstairs. Thank you.